Welcome back. This lecture is going to be following a format that a number of uh, recent lectures have. We're going to be, um, we're going to be, the slides are going to contain highlighted sections of books that summarize uh, important aspects of specifically ethnographic uh, research methods. We've contrasted quantitative research with qualitative in a number of ways. But I'm going to be taking us through uh, uh, a chapter in this book which is on the Google Drive and which you will be able to access. And what this chapter does is it introduces similar concepts but with slightly different words which help us kind of clarify about how we do research, how ethnographic research is a bit different. And it, it uses the idea of a descriptive uh, research question, a descriptive research um, um, uh, undertaking. So we're going to go into full screen now, and relatively briefly, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some of the fresh ways that this particular author uh, draws out important distinctions uh, between qualitative and quantitative research. And she starts by pointing out its philosophical, its differences in terms of philosophical paragraph, para, para, paradigm. This is, a, this is the most confusing and controversial dichotomy because it deals with philosophical or paradigm differences in the approach to research. This philosophical dichotomy, which is sometimes called a positivistic versus a constructivist, has a major impact on how research methods uh, are taught in the United States. Sometimes this dichotomy has created an either-or mindset with qualitative and quantitative research methods courses taught separately. In the post-positivist quantitative framework, a specific plan is developed prior to the study. In the constructivist qualitative approach, less structure is placed on the use of specific guidelines in their research design. However, there are general guidelines to be followed in qualitative research. Students must con sometimes confuse the paradigm distinction just presented with the type of data or data collection techniques. Quantitative data is said to be objective, which implies that the behaviours are less easily classified or quantified either by the informants. Now we've talked about uh, this in terms of one of the myths about uh, ethnographic research. Qualitative data is more subjective, which indicates that they could be interpreted differently by different people. Some schools, some examples are perceptions of pain, feelings about work, attitudes towards school. Usually, uh, these data, this data is gathered from interviews, observations, or narrative documents such as biography. The, this type of qualitative data is also gathered in studies that are generally quantitative. But in that case, researchers usually would translate such perceptions, feelings, and attributes into numbers. That's why they're quantitative researchers. For example, participants' subjective feeling of mental health or quality of life can be converted into numeral ratings or scores. In studies that are philosophically qualitative, researchers usually would not try to quantify their, subject, their subjective perceptions. The data are kept in text and analysed for themes. 
We believe that the approach in this book is useful for dealing with both qualitative subjective data and quantitative objective data. One of the things I like about this uh, treatment is the way that they uh, use the term descriptive research. We use the term descriptive research to refer to research questions that use only descriptive, not inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics such as averages and, and percentages summarise data from the current sample of participants without making inferences about the large population. In the descriptive approach, no formal comparisons or associations are made. Qualitative research could be classified as one type of descriptive research using this definition and framework. This distinction between what we call the descriptive approach and other approaches is unusual, but we think it is educationally useful in part because the term descriptive is used in a consistent way. And so how does a descriptive um, research question differ from ones which are interested in hypothesis, ones which are experimental? So uh, if we are interested in experimentation, we may have randomised sampling. Um, if we are non-experimental, we may uh, pursue a comparative methodology or seek to isolate associations. Now, all of these are different from a, an approach to research which is primarily descriptive. So let's go out of full screen and we're just going to introduce you now to the X-Mind where we're going to make final comments and most importantly we're going to be pointing out about where you should be reading uh, more about this way of thinking about research and we're going to be pointing out the other videos and the other reading resources, the other content where we revisit maybe in different ways similar themes. And by doing that we can help you keep a track of the videos and the reading, the articles, the monographs, the handbooks and the encyclopedias and dictionaries that are going to be most relevant uh, to you reading more about this interesting and important topic. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.